Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about the Play Canvas game engine. Now, Play Canvas is an engine I've talked about a number of times in the past. It is, on the back end, an open source um, 3D game engine for HTML5 slash JavaScript developers to create 3D games in the browser. And what they've just added is a bunch of 2D functionality on top of that. So now you have support for sprites, texture atlases, etc., as well as animations. So now you can actually use um, the Play Canvas engine to create 2D games or 2.5D games in addition to 3D titles. So today we're going to be looking at that new functionality that has just been added to the Play Canvas engine. Now Play Canvas, as I said, is something I've covered quite a few times. I've done a getting started tutorial. I will link that down below uh, and any other information I think is relevant. If you haven't checked out this engine yet and you are interested in working in the browser, I do recommend you do so. It's a very cool project. And today we're going to be specifically working in their um, 3D, or sorry, their browser-based editor for creating this game. And you'll see here is the blog post announcing the new functionality. I'll throw this link down below as well. But basically what they're saying is they've added sprite support, sprite animation support, um, texture atlas support, a new sprite editor, a sprite component, and basically all those things all go together so that you can now create 2D games in Play Canvas. And we're going to see it all in action. So that's why I'm glossing over it a little bit. On top of that, they also added nine slicing. Nine slicing or nine patch is a basically a way of taking a uh, shape like this. So it enables you to resize it infinitely in all directions. And what you're doing is you're basically cutting up an image into nine different images. You cut it across the top down each side, like here, across the bottom. And then so you've cut around all of the different edges. It allows you to um, have those stay the same size while everything inside can scale infinitely. It's a very common way of creating uh, buttons and scalable user interfaces using sprite-based data. Now, we're not going to cover that specifically because there are all kinds of resources out there for learning more about nine slicing or as it's more commonly known, nine patches. So we are going to look at the 2D functionality. Here we are in uh, Play Canvas. Let me just get rid of that. This is their web-based IDE that you can use for creating an author in your game. Uh, it's pretty full featured. You've got a full code editor in here. You can bring in your assets, etc. Speaking of assets, I've already brought one in. You can see right here, it's just a PNG file. It has three by four, so 12 frames of animation in it. Um, and again, like I said, it's just a PNG file. The only really significant thing about this guy is that it is uh, consistently sized. So each one of these frames and their empty space are all uh, exactly the same. So it's uh, 256 divided by three and 256 divided by four in sizes. Um, so what we are going to do is show how to turn this guy into a sprite. So starting with your raw ping, uh, you bring your graphics files into Play Canvas by simply just dropping them on the assets thing down here or clicking plus uh, describing what you want and then uploading it like so. Uh, so now that we've got this guy in here, right click it and create a texture atlas. Like so, and this will create an atlas file. Now this is based on the PNG file we just used and we're gonna just double click it and it opens this up in the sprite editor. And what we wanna do now is split this guy up into cells. So we can see here we have three rows and four columns like so. And now that you've selected them properly, say generate frames. And we'll use that math to go through and cut this up into all the various different frames of animation. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple so far. And now what we can do is just close out of there. So we now have a well-defined sprite atlas. Now we want to go ahead and create either a sprite or an animated sprite. We might as well create an animated sprite. So right click this guy and say create sprite um, asset. With that guy selected, we double click up here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me get rid of that guy. What I just did actually was made this entire thing into a sprite. So if there was only one actual image inside of your texture atlas, you would have done what I just did. Instead, what we want to do is double click it. And now we're going to do an animated sprite. So you can see here we have a downward walk animation from sprite uh, or frame one, frame two, and frame three, like so. What we can now do is basically shift collect those three frames at the top. So frame one, two, and three are now selected. You can see over here our incredibly janky animation playing. And we can basically say a new sprite from selection. So I click that guy and we just created a new sprite. We will call this guy uh, down walk animation. And then we'll do the same thing. So we'll go frames four, five, and six. Uh, create a new sprite from selection, and we'll call this left walk animation. Like so, 
All right, so we just defined two animations out of our existing sprite sheet. Now it's just a matter of basically creating a sprite in our world. You go into here is your basically scene graph. Uh, you can click up here so that your root is selected and we could right click and add a new entity or you could click this plus and add a new entity. You'll notice as we go down, uh, there is now a sprite option and we have a choice between sprite and animated sprite. If your sprite does not have multiple frames of animation, you would choose that one. We do have multiple animation frames. In this case, we choose this guy right here. So we created our animated sprite. Uh, we're going to go over here and now we're just going to define what it is. So first off, we have to tell it um, which sprite to use. So we can click there and we'll start with the down walk animation. We could add another clip like so. And in this case, we'll select our uh, left right animation. So we'll call this walk down. And we will call this guy walk left and I'm going to change out my frame rate to five frames per second because my animation is not exactly world shattering and you notice here you have an option for looping set animation and now we can basically we should be able to see in our scene there is our guy right there let's switch out to the camera mode available over here now you'll notice I've set this camera up uh, very very close to the surface so if we select the camera over here you will see it is positioned at one on the z-axis so we're really zoomed in and we're really pixelated because my sprite quality isn't exactly uh, world shattering and you'll also notice that we're using an orthographic projection orthographic projection basically means that as things get farther away they don't change in size it's, it's kind of an illusion that we do with our eyes when you're looking at a 3d world things that are farther away seem smaller uh, an orthographic projection turns that off and it's the most commonly used projection mode for a traditional 2d game all right so there is our sprite selected there it is in our world go ahead and press play and you will see assuming i didn't screw anything up dun, 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 there is our character walking so pretty straightforward, uh, straightforward stuff. If we wanted to go ahead and do a controller to switch between the animations, we could. Again, this is a component-based engine, so we just come up here to add component. And then we could attach a script to control this guy right here. So where did my script go? Right here. Let's add a script, new script. Uh, character controller. And that will just go ahead and create a new script for us. Available right there. Let's go back so we can actually click here and edit it up. And there you get your character controller script opens in their integrated editor. And as you will see, the integrator, the editor has full IntelliSense support. Um, so you can uh, code entirely in the cloud if that is your desire. And about that's where I'm going to stop. Other than this, I'll start going into, you know, stuff that was already existing functionality for um, the Play Canvas engine. I just want to focus on the new 2D stuff that they just added. I hope you found that kind of cool. It's it's going to um, really open up Play Canvas for a lot more new functionality, especially if you're looking in the two and a half space. Uh, straight out 2D, the functionality is still a little lacking. There's a physics plugin, so you can bring in your physics simulation, etc. But there's no support for things like tile mapping, etc. So if they want to go full blown 2D editor in the future, it'll be nice to see things like tile map support being added. But if you're looking at integrating 2D into a 3D scene, uh, this is some pretty cool functionality they just added. Uh, so that's why I decided to share it. Hope you guys did find that interested. Uh, and again, if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, the um, Play Canvas game engine, I will throw a couple links for your review down below. Uh, let me know what you think of Play Canvas engine in specific or the 2D functionality uh, that they just added. Is, is this interesting to you or do you still just not give a damn? All right. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.